So there is a very fine line between clever and stupid, and the project I'm about to describe definitely walks that thin line. Uh, this project is epic for my scale. Um, I am going to attempt to build from scratch an electric hydrofoil. Um, this will challenge pretty much every skill that I have, and with luck, I will be flying over the water within a few months, or I'm gonna waste a lot of money and have some pretty expensive um, recycling to do. But I should have a lot of fun doing it. So what you might say is an electric hydrofoil. Well, the first thing you have to do is go on Google and just Google it and watch a couple of videos and you'll totally understand why this is a very cool project. Um, and I'll also show you my expert artist rendition of the schematics of an electric hydrofoil here. Um, what you will see is a very cool surfer dude riding a modified surfboard that is suspended above the water riding on a wing of a hydrofoil. Now, within the board here is a battery and a wireless uh, remote control device that's connected to a wireless controller in his hand. He's not shooting a gun, that's his wireless controller. And um, the wireless controller communicates to the wireless receiver in the board that talks to an electronic speed controller that sends battery power that's also within the board down to this little torpedo electric motor on the bottom of the, under the water, and that propels the board forward. Um, if this is actually uh, accomplished, my rough estimates is that it's going to make me feel 20% younger, and I actually anticipate I can double my parental coolness factor from two to 4%. So as you can see, an e-foil is a pretty clever device and maybe just a little bit stupid. I mean, high voltage and water, what could go wrong? So why do I want to build an e-foil? Well, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of electric vehicles. I have built an electric car, an electric bike, I built an electric skateboard in the past. I generally like to have some silly fun with electricity from time to time. Um, I also have some other loves, and that is boating, um, water sports, <clears throat> and I've also built a few wood strip uh, kayaks and canoes in my past. And so the hydrofoil project kind of became inevitable. I needed to do it eventually. I even at one point, a couple of years ago, when I first saw an electric hydrofoil, started experimenting with building my own hydrofoil that I pulled behind a ski boat before, and that worked out pretty great. So I have decided it's time to pull the trigger and give this a shot. Now you might be asking if you want an electric hydrofoil, why don't you just go out and buy one? They're available for about $12,000, which is not spare change in my pocket these days. So um, I started doing some research as to how to build one because I knew someone had out there. And sure enough, there's a whole listserv of people at foil.zone, uh, the e-builders forum on foil.zone. Now this is a group um, from all over the world of really, really smart people, a lot of engineer types, uh, smarter people than me, that have figured out how to do this um, and are building boards all over the world. So that is my primary source of information and where I'd recommend anyone to go to get hooked up and do some research and a lot of reading if you're serious about trying this. So as I started researching building a board, um, I obviously had to build some sort of board to stand on that will contain the batteries and the electronics. And um, with my previous experience building wooden boats, the natural question popped into my head, well, why not try to build an e-foil board the same way I built a wood kayak? So that's the experiment that I'm trying uh, and also the purpose of these videos. I'm starting a series of a detailed step-by-step video series on how to build a cedar strip board purpose-built for an e-foil. Will it work? Honestly, I really don't know. Um, I did manage to build a board that I believe is going to be functional, but time will tell. So as a secondary goal of this project, in addition to seeing if a cedar strip built e-foil board will work, I also wanna find out if I can identify a plug and play solution for the propulsion system, the batteries, and the electronics that is gonna be uh, pretty fail safe and easy for maybe a non-engineer like myself uh, to do in a DIY project. 
So what could potentially be some of the pros and cons of trying to build an e-foil board out of cedar strips? Well, I made a short list here and I'm sure the list is going to grow on both sides as I try to figure out if it'll work or not. But for some of the quick pros, number one, it's wonderfully low tech. Um, I just designed this thing on graph paper, uh, kind of copying photos from some commercial boards uh, that were online. Um, I didn't use computer aided design or anything like that. Really, the process is pretty simple if you keep the design simple. Um, the other thing about it is it's cheap. Is that all, um, I think I built the Woody board for about 500 bucks. Um, I think I kept it under 500 bucks. Uh, all the materials were built mainly, or were purchased out of the home store at a Home Depot, uh, aside from other things I had to buy online uh, that you'd have to get anywhere, like um, fiberglass and epoxy and resin and things like that. Um, the tools needed to build a board are extremely simple that pretty much everybody has in their um, garage, uh, namely like a pocket knife. Um, you might have to invest about 20 bucks in a block plane uh, and a staple gun for about 15 bucks. Um, it is helpful if you have a table saw to do the initial milling of the wood for the cedar strips. Um, but if you, usually there's someone in the neighbor that has one of those and it's literally borrowing it for an hour, a couple of hours at most. Um, the, one of the pros of the design of the board is that it's hollow. Uh, the entire shell, um, it's, it's a quarter uh, inch cedar that is sandwiched between fiberglass on both the inside and the outside, and that creates a rigid inner shell. Um, and so you have kind of an infinite amount of variety of ways that you can use the inner space compartment for your batteries and your electronics. Um, there are vertical supports that go in the middle of the shell, but those supports can be moved to other locations if they need to be. So really there's a lot of infinite possibilities with that, as opposed to building like a solid foam board and fiberglass and that. Um, I'm kind of uh, biased, but I think it looks cool. I think that's pro, but um, I'm kind of old and retro woodies are kind of cool to me. So that might not be your gig, but for me, it's nice. Uh, what are the possible cons? Well, um, heavy. Uh, now I built a big board. It's five foot six inches long um, and it's meant to be very buoyant. I'm going to be a brand new rider, so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get up on the thing. So I wanted to keep it as bigger and easy as I could. And that's what I learned was the right thing to do. Um, and it is very similar design to a commercial uh, retail producer that produces a big board uh, for beginners. Um, but uh, the board when it's built out came out to 21.5 pounds. That's 9.75 kilograms for the rest of the world out there. Um, and to answer that question whether that's heavy or not, I don't really know. And I would love someone to make a comment for people that have built uh, from the forum. Please let me know if that's too heavy or too little. I think what I've learned about weight of boards is that um, it may not disrupt the general function of a beginner board like this, but it's just going to be hard to get to and from the shore of wherever you have to haul the thing if it's way too heavy. Um, the design process itself with the cedar strips, it does limit how curvy and wavy uh, your design can be just to the limitation of how you can bend the strips. Um, so you have to take that into consideration if you want something very sleek and rounded and curvy and, and, and sexy like that. So there's some minor limitation that way. Now, uh, the remainder of the cons is, I don't even know if it's gonna work. Uh, we'll see if the whole thing collapses the first time I try it. Um, but we'll find out and that's, that's why it's fun to try new things. So in the spirit of my being a cheap bastard, just ask my wife, um, I kept a running total of all the money I spent and I will even give you a screenshot of my flow sheet that kind of details all the costs that I spent on the board alone. Um, but here's a rough estimate of what things were. All the wood came from Home Depot, that includes wood for the form and all the cedar to make the strips and it ran me about 90 bucks. Um, the fiberglass I bought online from a distributor I got 10 yards of six ounce fiberglass for about 70 bucks. I used West Systems Epoxy. Now there's a big fudge factor here in how much money you're gonna spend on epoxy depending on what epoxy you get and what kind of hardeners you get and stuff like that. But I would budget anywhere between 150 and $200 for that. Um, I think I got around with about 150. Um, the most expensive thing I bought for the boat were the latches that hold the um, 
uh, deck lid down and those were about 25 bucks each and I got four of those. So there was a hundred bucks of that. And then um, the combination of glue staples, varnish for the boat, um, the rubber seals to seal the lid, um, and even the traction deck pad, I paid a, roughly about a hundred bucks for. But you can see all those details on the spreadsheet. So now let's talk about the cost of the whole e-foil board, soup to nuts. Um, so if I'm starting with 500 bucks invested in the board that I built, I do have a foil that I already purchased on Amazon a year ago that I built a foil board that I towed behind my ski boat. Um, it's a SUP foil called Upsurf, um, and it was 500 bucks on Amazon of all things. Like I said, I live in the middle of Colorado, so I don't really have access to a lot of people with foils around here. Um, I don't know if it's a good foil or not. Um, it's a carbon wing, but it's got a, I think it's a uh, very heavy aluminum uh, mast and an aluminum um, uh, fuselage of the, of the foil. And it weighs about 9.5 pounds. So um, it is the foil that I've got. It's the foil I'm gonna use. Let's see if we make it work. Um, so now the intriguing part is the electronics and the battery. Um, part of the thing that I'm very intrigued about is to maybe try one of these uh, e-foil kits that I've seen advertised that can go up for around $1,200. And that will usually includes the waterproofed motor with a prop, as well as the speed controller and uh, the remote controller, radio controller to make it all work. Um, that's what I'm setting as my budget. Uh, when I get feedback and I do more research as I head into the second phase of this project, um, I will update with uh, subsequent videos as to what direction I'm going to take. Um, but when you then add in the cost of a battery, which can be dramatically variant, um, I'm trying to keep my total cost under $3,000. So in comparison to $12,000, that sounds pretty good to me. Now, in full disclosure, I will tell you, I have no relationships with any companies that build any of these things. I am completely 100% flying solo all by myself with everything I've done to date. Should any company out there decide to offer me, uh, I don't know, a free kit or a free motor or something like that, well, that would be awesome. I'd be very happy with that. And I promise I will disclose anything like that if it happens with my subsequent videos at that time. But for now, I'm flying blind. So hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you're really interested in seeing the whole step-by-step -step build of the Woody board, I will be posting those videos very, very soon. Um, I'm not sure how many videos there will be, but it will go from the building of the form to the laying down the strips, to the fiberglassing, to the finishing and the cutting out of everything. There's tons of time-lapse video with the whole thing. And if you're really into that, I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, um, I'm not going to tell you my name because nobody really cares. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you hated it, hey, let me know. If it makes you feel better to spout off some hate, that's fine. Um, I'm really looking forward to some feedback, especially from folks on the Builders Forum for the eFoils, because if you can help me get through this, um, I'm sitting in the middle of dead of winter right now. It's in Colorado. I'm so looking forward to April or May. I'm going to have to buy myself a dry suit. And I can't wait to try this thing out because it's time to learn how to fly. Thanks for watching. See you next time on The Fine Line Between Stupid and Clever.